play 1600 with you, the Mersey Alternator Room Fire, followed by a boat drill. Managers on board need to take communication skills very seriously. More things go wrong because of poor communications than for any other reason. Thank you. Okay, sir. We learn to use direct speech very early in life. Because we do it all the time, we often assume we are good at it and there's not much we need to do to improve our skills. But the very fact that it is so immediate often stops us from considering how well we are conveying a message and how much we listen as well as talk in order to really exchange information. Good morning. We will be at the pilot station approximately... All manner of information must be constantly exchanged on board. How good are you at communicating? Have you ever been confused by instructions? Ever lost time and temper over an unclear message? Has anybody ever misunderstood your intentions? Ever thought you chose the wrong method? Wondered if your message got to the right person? Every facet of ship management covered in this course will be affected by your skills as a communicator. Good communication is about exchanging information and feedback. It's about being understood correctly the first time. No wonder the IMO's guidelines on ship management emphasize the need for good communication within the ship and between the ship and management ashore. To communicate effectively requires thought. A systematic basis for information exchange is required. One is suggested in the study guide. A poem which ends with the words what and why and when and how and where and who. If you cover all these points in your communications, you will reduce the margin for misunderstanding. Let's first consider aspects of spoken communications. In part four of this course, we showed these shots of pilotage as a good example of teamwork where all concerned combined their skills to get the job done safely. But it wouldn't work without effective communication. Language needs to be precise, clear and paced for good understanding. Reception of messages is confirmed by feedback and questions must be asked in time to avoid errors. Cutting can be bridge to full mouth. It will be spring lines first, spring line first each end. It's a well-established procedure, and its ground rules have been formulated by precedent. You'll have a, a line gang up there that was supposed to go off, but they've come forward now, so you will be getting a line gang up forward. Roger that, forward. We should aim at getting precise results in every situation where spoken communication is chosen. Thank you, Joe. Can they can be a bridge aft. Once you've got all your wires out, if you could run your polyprop after that, Joe, once you've got your wires out, polyprop, please. The course's study guide will help you to compare the merits and suitability of the skills needed for informal face-to-face -face communications, particularly asking and listening rather than just giving instructions. I want you to paint the starboard section of deck just by the entrance to ship's office where it's corroded. Do you know the area I'm talking about? Does the message mean the same to both parties? I know that area. Isn't it just to the left of the door? That's right, it's pretty obvious. Very badly corroded. I'll double check it with you anyway. So, you've stated the task, but the job has to be done well. You have to relate it to the person and explain why. Damage is exposed metal and it's rusting pretty badly, so it's got to be a thorough job. Prepared well and given a protective coating and painted. You do understand the importance of that, don't you? Yes. You mean the rust has to be cleaned back to metal and the paint has to meet the thickness of a good area. Good. That depth has to be well filled with the edges well feathered. So, he's described the job and the aims and listened to get feedback on the other's understanding. But this paint is expensive, so he's got to be sure about competence. 
Have you used bipack paint before? Uh, yes. Well, I've done a fair bit of deck painting, and sometimes I've used bipack paint. The advantage of face-to-face -face communication is that you can look for non-verbal clues. By observing, as well as listening, you're more likely to promote the kind of feedback that will help you to be sure. OK, so can you tell me what's important about mixing it? I know you have to follow the instructions carefully. Any special reason? I know it can be mixed wrongly. That's true, but there's more to it than that. It can harden too quickly and get wasted if you mix too much. So you have to work out how much you need before you start. There's also uh, several safety measures about the solvent, and I'll go through them with you. Even in this simple okay. example, proper attention to communication to will lead to a more effective you job you know and prevent waste. Labels and tins change. There are several different types. If you encourage feedback, so, you have a way of measuring yeah, the quality yeah, of your communications and knowing whether you've overcome any language barriers that might exist. We did isolate the emergency generator from different cultures have different outlooks and expectations, and this can lead to misinterpretation of messages. So it's important to use plain words to be concise, complete, and factually correct. You can discuss more with Chief Officer. You want me to clean the fuel oil filters today? Keep your standards high, even if you do not receive the same quality in response. It's also helpful to learn about other crew members' language and culture. In this day and age, it is more often than not that we have more than one nationalities on board the ships. The little mistake that some people make in this case is they create groups that isolate themselves and they don't really talk to each other. In my view, that's a mistake and it creates problem for the ship and its management. Effectively, everybody should leave their nationalities aside and work together as a team for the common benefit the common safety and the good of the ship in the office. The different nationalities should definitely share the same mess rooms on a ship. We don't want the one guys, the one nationality to sit in one mess room and the other nationality to sit in another mess room. Um, in addition to that, arrange social get-togethers at regular intervals, because this is again is a, is a way of people opening up and telling you any crutches they may have, or they would tell you what would make their life on board easier, more comfortable. And these things are very often not connected with big uh, uh, costs. These are very often the small things that will make the life, the living together on board better and make the people feel more comfortable on the ship. Cooperation on board vessel by different groups is extremely important. We have a very limited number of people on board, and therefore, and each one relies on the other to help them out in a crisis situation. So therefore, the cooperation must be maximized. There must be total harmony among the people serving on board, irrespective of their ethnic group. In this, therefore, a common language is essential. Good communications between departments and within departments on a ship is extremely important, both from a safety and efficiency point of view of operating the ship. When we have ships being operated, sometimes by three or four different nationalities on board at the same time, good, clear, concise communications in a language which everyone can understand is extremely important. It's only by being able to accomplish that that you can be sure that an individual has understood clearly what is required of him and then you stand the chance of having an accident-free operation. Where spoken communication is not face-to-face, -face, the same emphasis on preparation, plain words, conciseness, accuracy and feedback must apply. Normal one wires, Joe. Normal one. Yes, Colonel. This is the Esperanza reply. Go ahead, please. In spoken communication between ship and shore, it's essential that the language to be used is agreed and understood by all parties. Where protection of the ship, the cargo, and the environment are concerned, a misunderstanding could have severe consequences. Please confirm again whether you've got your show manifolds open. That is affirmative. One should always try and discipline oneself 
into not just picking up the phone and uh, speaking to the office immediately. Think about the problem that you have, discuss it with your colleagues on board the ship, form a written uh, message, uh, a written query, outlining the problem and the answer or the, 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 the advice that you, you wish to have before you send the message. You then stand the chance of getting a much more helpful answer when you do telephone the office later on. Indeed, it may not be necessary to telephone the office. The office may come back to you in writing with the reply, or they may advise you to telephone someone else who can give you better information than they can. This confirmed that uh, the two consignments of uh, stores have arrived. So idea is that uh, tell it You should question whether spoken time. communication is the best choice. Okay, and there is uh, no record, and since you may not talk to the right person, you can't be sure that the facts are passed on. Sometimes written backup, fax or telex is necessary. Fax and telex can be useful when communicating across time zones. Yes, uh, we all must go to the EHQ. Yes, fire in the emergency alternator room. In general, if you develop good habits, they'll serve you as well for running regular routines as they will for getting things right when the going gets tough. The 3 OE will not appear. Roger that, thank you. The study guide gives greater detail and also compares the relative benefits of spoken and written communication. So, we'll only illustrate certain issues. Written messages are fundamental to regulating resources, spreading information, and extending excellence within the ship. Written communication includes electronic media, such as email, fax, and telex. Written communication forms the mainstay of day-to-day -day information exchanged with head office, as well as official recorded aspects of the ship's operations. Written communication is the medium most frequently used for conveying hard facts, statistical information, and long-term requirements. Its clarity and accuracy has a direct effect on safety and efficiency. The ability to write good communications is a key management skill. Writing has the advantage of allowing you to redraft until it is correct, Always put yourself in the place of the recipient and read it over before you send it, asking if it's clear, contains all the relevant facts, all the right questions, and what it suggests about you and your requirements. In a written communication, I feel the most important qualities are simplicity, accuracy, and clarity. For example, a breakdown of a machinery, we need a very accurate detail as to what needs to be done. We could be sending a cross peer technician on board. When they arrive, they find that they haven't bought the right tool or the right spare parts in order to be able to resolve the problem that exists. So therefore, it is essential that the ship should be able to analyze the fault or problem that exists, let the show site know these are the problem, this is what is required basically, and the show site is then able to provide the necessary support. A, an inaccurate, garbled kind of uh, information or non-coherent information coming through uh, takes up a lot of uh, show site time in analyzing what is being said. When communicating, communicate in a timely and efficient manner. Don't go out and spend a hell lot of money, which is a question of money as well, in sending long messages which are meaningless. Make sure that you get your point across in a, in a very concise manner and we in the office will certainly take the necessary steps to take action or reply on the queries that we have received. The people ashore want to see communications from the ship which are clear, concise, and unambiguous. They should address the important issues and they should not mix up uh, different items within the same communication. For example, personnel requirements, crew changes should be clearly separated from operational reports or from mechanical or technical problems. In the organization ashore, the personnel department will deal with personnel matters, the technical department with technical matters, 
and perhaps the purchasing department with stores matters. So that communication, when it arrives in the office, may go to three separate people or even more. And each person must be able to clearly identify which part of the communication is his responsibility to deal with. If one can accomplish that, then the reaction and the reply which comes back to the ship will be in its turn clear, concise, unambiguous and helpful. Written communications can go beyond only listing instructions and stating orders. They can offer advice and impart the benefit of experience, but only if the writer has thought about the implication and value of the message. A night orders book can be little more than its name suggests, or it can provide constructive guidance based on experience. Handover notes can be hasty, perfunctory, and seen as nothing more than satisfying regulations. Or they can be detailed, purposeful, and intended to inform. A report can be biased, judgmental, short-sighted, and factually deficient. Or it can be impartial, constructive, informative, and significant to the settlement of a claim or dispute. Somebody, perhaps a long way away, will have to understand what you need. Yeah, my what do you think of that? I don't understand that line there at all. They will need to know what action to take, sometimes yeah, very quickly. Right. I think they have not understood this, you see. Why don't you do a thing? Call Katerson up. Ask Neither of you will appreciate a communication that only gives rise to a series of questions in order to reach a clear understanding. If clear, unambiguous, carefully worded facts and instructions should be the aim in all written communications, there are certain areas where their effects are crucially significant, such as cargo plans. Formal reporting, such as all logbook entries, should be plainly informative in easily legible handwriting. It is always important to get the wording right and the presentation appropriate to the role. Information should not be held back or regarded as personal power. The worst thing is for it to leak out through unofficial channels and become rumour. This will almost always be incorrect or exaggerated and have negative effects on team spirit on board. Communications are the glue that holds all management functions together. If we choose them with intelligence, use them well and make our messages clear, every interdependent aspect of the ship's operation begins to connect properly and work at its best. Thank you. In communication, as in all management functions, always aim for the highest standard. Three, nine. Three, nine.